Welcome to week three, uh, assignment 3.4.1, the cost analysis worksheet. Uh, the goal of this assignment is to analyze uh, the cost associated with a bus company's fleet of vehicles called Prontex. So they trying to use Excel uh, with a bunch of formulas and functions or, or built-in formulas and functions within Excel to analyze some of their cost. So basically it's a financial document. They wanna look at some numbers associated with their day-to-day -day operations. The end product should look like this. And you know this assignment, as with every single assignment in this course, will have two documents. One Word document that has a list of all the instructions needed to be applied into a data file or an Excel data file. As you can tell here, we have a Prontix, Furrier Services, that's the name of the company. And the need here is their first quarter vehicle cost analysis. And there's some numbers that we're gonna need to plug in in order for us to make some calculations, okay? Now, um, we're gonna perform the following steps. Uh, so mileage cost, cell E4, we're gonna need to apply this function. And remember guys, with Functions in Excel always going to start with the equal sign. This is for Excel to understand that we are trying to plug in a function to this cell. So click on cell E4. This is E4. So that's an active cell right now. You can tell from the order in here. And you can also uh, you know, check the name up here as well, just to make sure that we are clicking on the right cell. Uh, for cell E4, we want to apply this formula. We want to multiply B4, cost per mile, with C4, which is miles driven. So while we have E4 selected, we type equal, then we're going to go to, what is it? B4 times C4, okay? So it is equal B4, this is B4, times C4. Then you hit enter, you'll get the results of this multiplication on cell E4. So E4 will have B4 times C4, okay? Good. The same applies again. Well, another function you would need to apply for cell F4 is F4, okay? And he wants us to go ahead and apply um, D4 divided by C4. So there's D4, okay? divided by, whoops, sorry. Again, I forgot to put the equal sign, okay? So D4 divided by E4. Okay, enter, and you'll get the result. I'm sorry, it's D4 divided by C4. You see, I did a mistake in here. So that's a C4, not E4. And go back and just hit C4 in here, and that should give you an updated one. Okay, so to, we did the first couple. I'll have you guys do this one. Okay, pause the video and do cell G4 by adding D4 to E4. Also do cell H4 by adding or by dividing G4 with C4. And you can always use also on this step, you wanna, you wanna use the fill handle to copy the four formulas that you're gonna be doing from E4, H4 to E4. So basically, after you finish this and this, you're gonna go ahead and just highlight this, use the fill handle. You see, you, you hover over the lower right corner of this range. Just, you know, hold down the lift, you know, button on your mouse, just drag it all the way down to H12, which is this one. Okay, of course, I'm not gonna get any values here because I have not done these formulas yet. This is your job to do, right? Which is this step and this step. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now, determine the totals for miles driven. So this is miles driven. There's my total, basically that's still C13. The miles driven, we also want the maintenance cost, mileage cost, and the total. This one means cost, mileage cost, as well as the total cost. Again, this is this is easy to do. We're gonna make use of the built-in function called sum. So if you type up here equal, 
as soon as you type SU, you see that the, the list is going to come up, SUM, open a round bracket, highlight using your mouse all the way down to cell C12, then make sure you close that bracket and hit enter. This is going to give you the total for the miles driven, okay? You can do the same thing for the maintenance cost. Again, um, formulas in Excel always start with the equal sign, then do sum, open the bracket, then highlight using your mouse, okay? Make sure you close the bracket and hit enter, okay? You can do the same thing for the mileage cost. You, you can pause the video and do the mileage cost as well as the total all in row 13. We are all in row 13 in this case, okay? Copy the formula and sell F12 to F13. We've got F12. You're gonna copy this to F13 by using the fill handle, okay? Really easy. And also copy the formula H12 to H13 as well. Okay, I don't have any value in here. You should have a value in here, but again, use the exact same thing, the fill handle to do this. To assign formula in S and, and cell H12 to H13 in the total line. Reapply the total cell styles to F13 and H13. So F13, we need to apply the total cell style to this one and this one as well. And the, the way to do this, I can, what I can do is use my mouse to click on this one because I need H13 as well. I can just hold down the control key on the keyboard, okay? and then do one left click using your mouse to highlight both cells. And he want us to go ahead and apply the totals using the cell style. There's a total down here. Just click on it to apply the total cell style. Okay. Now, in, in step number three, in the range of D14, D16, let's see, where's D14? D16, okay. We want to go ahead and apply the average, max, and min values respectively, and then use the fill to copy these functions to range E14, H16. Okay, again, making use of some of those built-in functions as well. Again, equal, there's a function called average. Here we go. And I'm trying to take the average going from D or all the way down to D12. Do not include the totals in your average, okay? Close this. Okay, enter, this is my average. What is my highest? There is a function called max. Again, what is the maximum value out of this range? Enter, there's my maximum. And you're gonna do the same thing for the lowest. I think there's a function called min. Yep, that's right. Again, you can actually grab the min out of the range or list of these numbers as well, okay? He wants us to go ahead and also take this, copy this over to E14, H16. From E14 to H16. So you're gonna use the fill handle to do this. I'll let you guys do this. You can pause the video to finish this part. Oops, to finish this part. Okay, now, Let's go to the last section here where you're gonna format the worksheet as follows. Now you can change the worksheet theme to Berlin using page layout and, and, and theme group. So if you just, you can click anywhere on the, on the worksheet. Okay, and from the page layout to the theme, look for Berlin, I think it's right here. Just click on it, as simple as this. Okay, so we're done with this one, easy. Apply, now I've seen some students, uh, you, know, uh, you know, where they, they kind of like, you know, um, you know, miss, I think they, they, they don't have the cell style feature added to their Excel. If that's the case, let me know. This is probably, a you know, um, you know, a problem with, with your own Excel application, okay? You should all have this feature as a part of your Excel application. If you don't see this, let me know right away. It means that you probably did not properly install the Excel application to your computer. But... Now, cell A1, he want to change it to the title cell style. So that's cell A1, see? I'm going to go to cell, go back to home, cell style. This has to take the title. Really easy, okay? 
uh, still A2 is also a title, but we're changing the font. Here's A2 is also a title. And we're also changing the font size to 14, right? Really easy. Cells A1 and A2, I'll let you guys do this. That's a rose, accent six, lighter 80%. It's a fill color. Again, guys, don't get confused between the fill and the font. Which here we're referring to the, to the fill, okay? So I highlight both. I go to the fill color. It's this guy. We have a fill and we have a font, okay? I've seen a lot of students actually getting confused between both of these features. With this tip, it's asking for the fill, okay? So highlight both, go to the fill, and apply the proper, I think it's this one, rose accent six, lighter, is it, is it 80 or 40%? It's lighter 80%. So if you go here again, and you go here, that's a 40, oh, that's probably here, that's a 40%, 25, lighter 80%. Okay, th this is the guy. So you're gonna pick this one to apply. And again, it's applied to both of these cells, okay? So we're done with this one. And add an outside border. I'll let you guys add. pause the video to add an outside border to cells A1 and 2. Cells B, B4, D4, H4, and these cells, you're going to get the accounting number format with two decimal points. So I'm going to, let's go ahead and just do this carefully. With cells B4, there's B4. He wants us to also take, um, let me minimize this a little bit. Okay. So, I'm gonna actually expand this or actually minimize this, I should say. So with cell, he says B4, this is B4. I'm gonna hold down the control key on my keyboard, on my keyboard to do D4 and H4. There's D4. Do H4. Okay. So again, make sure you hold down the control key to select more than one cell as well as D13 to H13. Here's D13 to H13. And again, while you hold down the, uh, the control key, use your mouse to select all these cells or range of cells. So we wanna go uh, do a counting number format with two decimal points. So this is a counting number. There should be somewhere in here. Okay, let me just maximize this. We've got an accounting number. Here we go. So you go to numbers here, and you hit accounting, and it says with two decimal points. And I think we are applying the dollar sign as well, if not, if I'm not mistaken. Click OK on this one. See if that's the case. So we do accounting number here with two decimal points and a fixed dollar sign as well using the accounting number. Okay. Hopefully that's that's clear to you guys. Okay. Now, with cells B5, B12, let's say B5 to B12, as well as D5, H12. B5, I'm gonna hold down the control key again to H12, so all the way down here. What do you want us to do? Uh, we're gonna apply the comma style format Okay, with two decimal places as well using the comma. Okay, so here's the comma. Again, let me maximize this. Here's the comma, and with two decimal places, make sure it's two decimal. Oops, it's two decimal places here. There's a number that has two decimal places, and make sure we are selecting a comma format for this one. Okay, so it is a comma. If you look at it, there's two decimal places and there's also a comma places for this one as well, okay? Um, okay, that's one. And again, I'll let you guys finish up what you need to do for this one. Now, for this one, num num uh, uh, step number G, I, I, I found a lot of uh, you know confusion in the past with students. Now, with cell C4 to C13, there's C4, to C13, all the way down here, he wants us to go ahead and do the comma style, but with no decimal points. So what you can do with this one, it's still a comma style, okay? But it do he doesn't want to see any decimal points. What you can do is go to the number in here and just remove these decimal points. Make it zero, click okay. 
So it's it's a comma, but there is no decimal points included. I found a lot of you know questions or uh, confusion in this part uh, from some of my former students. Okay, now with conditional formatting, guys, H four to H twelve. So highlight H four to H again. We don't have any values here. You should have values. You go here, conditional formatting. We'll look. There's a new rule. We're looking for. Uh, cells that contain values that is greater than, okay, what's my value in this case? It's 2.15, whoops, greater than 2.15. And he wants us to go ahead and apply some formatting. And based on what you see on the document here, it looks like we have, uh, let me go back to my document here. It looks like we have a fill background color of orange and the font is white. Okay, just make sure you know this and compare what you see on, uh, compare it to this one, okay? So here, whoops, minimize this. So I'm gonna force says any value that can, that's uh, greater than 2.15, I'm gonna go ahead and format it. So the fill, which is my background color goes orange, you know, Pick a color that's you know close enough to what you see on the on the instructions document. I think this guy is close enough. And for the font, it's always a white. Uh, and you should I think you should be okay there. There we go. Click OK. Click OK. I don't have. It's not going to change anything in here because I don't have any values, obviously. But that's how you do it. Hopefully that's helpful. And thank you very much. I don't think anything left there. Um, so this is the last one and, you know, increase if you need to, then make sure that you're saving your work. Thanks for watching.